through all four edges of that. The shoulder cuts right here on the stretcher need to be precisely cut. Otherwise, when it's driven together, you won't have a nice fit right along this line, and the trestle won't be perfectly vertical. Now, you could cut it a lot of different ways, but since I have the radial arm here, I'm going to do it with that. It's something. Stand the fence up a little bit higher with this piece of plywood so that I have a good solid backing to make the cut. So I'll just slide it over and run the saw through. On the end of the stretcher piece, you can see by the layout lines that it goes straight for a ways, and that's where the trestle fits on. Then it's slightly tapered. Now, it's a heavy piece, so it's going to take some careful hand-eye coordination to get it through the saw. The trestle assembly is held together by means of wedges on either end. And note that it's straight on one side and tapered on this side. That's so it'll wedge in there tightly. It also means that I'm going to have to cut the mortise at a taper, at that five degree taper. So I'll do that over on the drill press where I've been doing all the other mortising, except that I've added a piece of wood which has been cut at a five degree angle, which gives me the right relationship to the drill press. So I'll drill one hole on each end. Now the rest of the mortising will take place at just 90 degrees. Okay, that cleans up the mortises, and now I'm ready to make the wedges, which are half-inch stock, and I'll just hold a couple pieces together and cut them on the bandsaw. Well, that does a nice job rounding off these edges. I'm just using a quarter inch rounding over bit in my router table. Now I'll bring this over to our trestle assembly and see if it fits in there good. Okay, that's pretty good. And our centerpiece is all fit. And now just to tighten down this wedge. Now I'm ready for the top. Well, a circular saw with a board clamp down is a perfect way to square up this table. Now, on each end, I'm going to have to make a tongue, which will accept the breadboard edge that will go like this. And to do that, I'm going to use my router with a straight cutting bit and a fence. And I just have to take my time and remove a little bit of material with each pass. Okay, now I'm going to make the same pass down on the other end before I make any further adjustments. Okay, that takes care of the tongue. Now I want to put a groove in this breadboard piece that will slip over the tongue. But I don't want the groove to go all the way through the end of this breadboard piece. Notice that I've installed a piece of tape on the table to indicate where I want to let the piece down and remove it so that I'll end up with a half an inch of wood remaining so that that tongue won't show through.
with a handsaw and a sharp chisel, I've made this little shoulder at the end of the table, and that's so I can slip that breadboard edge over. Now I'm just going to clamp it in place temporarily so that I can drill some holes. Now, this is the underside of the table, and I'm going to drill a 3 8 inch diameter, but not quite all the way through, for some dolls. I'm going to just pull out this doll I set in here to keep the holes aligned. So I can take off this edge, and I want to elongate the holes on each edge, just in the tongue piece, so that the top can expand and contract freely with changes of weather. The only glue I need on these dolls is the last eighth of an inch, just to hold it in place. And I'll just saw these off with my handsaw, and now we're ready to start sanding this top. Okay, now I'm ready to round over the edges on my top. And for that, I'm going to use a half-inch rounding over bit. Notice that under the table, there are two cleats that have been screwed on. And they go on each side of the trestle to hold the top in place. And I'll make those from this stock right here. And the first thing I want to do is relieve these edges by using my bandsaw. Well, now I'll relieve these edges with my quarter-inch rounding over bit in the router table. With the cleats fastened in place, as well as the center brace, I'm ready to see how well this top fits on top of the trestle. Now, that seems to fit pretty good. Not bad for a rainy day. A few more hours of sanding on this table, and it'll be ready for some kind of finish. One thing that was really nice about that pine table down in Nantucket was that dark, rich color. So to get the cherry a little darker, I'm going to put a cherry stain on it. I'll apply it with the brush as evenly as possible, let it sit for about 10 minutes, and then wipe off the excess. Well, depending on how much I rub this down will determine the final color that I end up with. And I think this is just about right. Well, what do you think? After the cherry stain dried, I put on two coats of satin finish urethane with a light sanding between each coat. And now this table is ready for many a grand meal.